I make stuff. Um, is the best way to put it. Uh, he so uh, loquaciously listed off all the things I was about to tell you in this slide. Uh, we need to talk more before we uh, do these things. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so my name is Xavier. Uh, I make stuff. And I'm here to talk to you guys today about things that don't exist, right? Fantasy. Um, I do a lot of stuff. I write, I direct, uh, I design, I animate. Uh, do motion graphics, I illustrate. Uh, I'm a pluralist, right? Or uh, some people would call it, uh, I'm an imagineer. By some people, I mean me, I just made that word up. Uh, but I don't necessarily get paid to imagine things, even though that's like so fun. I get paid to imagine things and then make them real, right? So, um, what I kind of want to discuss with you guys today, because I, I want to have a conversation with everybody, I don't want to just talk to you guys, but I want to discuss the process of cr making fantasy real, right? Um, ever since I was young, ever since I was a kid, I always had a, an active imagination, and I like to think that everyone did, and mine just didn't die away. Uh, whenever I was riding in the car, uh, I always look out the window, and like, no matter what, I'd see three ninjas um, running and jumping, doing parkour all through the trees and the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the buildings and stuff, and then Wolverine would be chasing them, right? <laughs> and then like, it was like, no matter what, no matter where I was, if I was in Brookfield, it didn't matter. It was Wolverine and three ninjas. And so from an early, from an early age, I, I noticed that I would see things that weren't there. Um, and at some point in time, I learned how to try to make them actually be there, right? Uh, so before I get too far into it, I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I make, uh, just so you can be familiar and believe me when I say I make stuff. Fresh, 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 fresh dopamine. Dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. I want to show you how we do just to get you I'm the son of Sam. Who dope is us? We dope as fuck. We stick them up and then we sprinkle sodium and open cut. Abso and those chosen. You need to quit. Close colon. No shit. Wait. One moment. Who dope is us? We dope as fuck. You running low on dopamine. You running low on dopamine. You running low on dopamine. You'll never be as dope as me. All right. Thank you. Um, so after I show people that, um, I typically get three questions, right? First of which is, how'd you come up with that? Second one is, where do you get those ideas? <laughs> and I wish I could do that. 
Now, I typically answer these questions, and I'm, I'm not trying to be an asshole when I say it, but I'm just, the way that I say stuff can come off wrong sometimes. <laughs> so, how'd you come up with that? I needed to, because it's my job, and I gotta buy food and pay rent and all them other kind of things. It's just, I have to do this. Um, where'd you get those ideas? Everywhere and nowhere at the same time, that paradox of that. Uh, and then, I wish I could do it too. And I say, but you can. And they're like, but I can't. And I'm like, but you can. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you can do this. Like, <laughs> so, um, and, and that last part always gets to me because it's like, there's no difference between me or Cause or Pharrell Williams and anybody who's in this room, not that I'm trying to put myself on the previous levels, but, uh, or anybody anywhere, the thing is is some people put in more time to hone their craft. There's, there's this thing that people think that you have to be talented to come up with good ideas or to be able to execute them well. And I mean, you do, but talent isn't this innate thing that just you're born with, right? Talent is practice over time. And the more you do stuff, the better you get at it, right? So why can't we apply that thinking to the creative process and to fantasizing and then pulling your fantasies down from whatever universe they exist in, right? Go see Doctor Strange, it was a great movie. <laughs> so this is what I just said, yep, everyone is creative. Some people just practice it more than others. Uh, didn't practice this presentation enough, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of my favorite quotes, my beats was whack at one point, dog. I wasn't always having hot beats. I learned how to make hot beats. It's Kanye West. <laughs> Genius, right? Genius, absolute. Now, uh, what, what he's speaking to is the, is the fact that no matter who you are, where you are, at some point in time, you suck, <laughs> period. Like when you start doing something, you're not that good at it. There's an anomaly sometimes when you all of a sudden you think you're good because you win at a video game and you're like, I'm the man, but then your friend comes over and crushes you and then you get humbled, right? So we all suck at some point, but you have to have the dedication to get through that suck, right? So another, another song lyric from his is, lock yourself in a room, making five beats a day for three summers, right? So that's his dedication to his craft. He started off, he wasn't that good, but he kept practicing, kept practicing, and now he would, a lot of people would consider top five of the greatest producers in hip hop history, right? So again, how can we apply that to creative thinking, right? Fantasizing. Michael Jordan. Anybody know who Michael Jordan is? Yes! yes! That dude! Would you believe he was like the greatest basketball player ever? Bro, like somebody told me that, I couldn't, I could. He didn't make the high school basketball team, right? He didn't, he got cut. Yet he had the audacity to fantasize or believe that he should be on that team, right? Don't worry about where you are right now. Worry about where you wanna be at, right? Because that'll be the drive that'll take you past everybody else who's complacent with where they are, right? Um, so with that, I wanna present you with these three things that I feel are super important when it comes to thinking creatively, right? And trying to make things that don't exist, exist. The first one is necessity, right? So fantasy isn't arbitrary, it serves a purpose. So you gotta remember that. The second is research, right? Still less things from more people, right? All right, remember that, I'm gonna say that again. Still less things from more people, all right? And uh, 
work. There's no way to get around that. Like you gotta, you just gotta work at some point in time. Work smart and hard, and you will be successful. Uh, so again, back to that first question: How did you come up with that? Right? Necessity. I needed to solve a problem. Right? The way that I got into a lot of the things that I got into, the way that I developed the style that I have. It's all from necessity. Uh, people would come to me, they'd shoot a video, right? And they'd be like, yo, we spent a lot of money on this video, we don't have enough money to reshoot it, but it's not good enough. Please make it better, right? And then so I got into the business of polishing doo-doo until <laughs> it looked good. Uh, and so, and with that, it's like, I'd have a cut and I'm wondering to myself, like, how do I make this better? Like, what goes here? And I go back to seeing Three Ninjas running and Wolverine and I'm like, they don't fit in this song because uh, it's about, uh, you know, shooting people and uh, I don't think those go together very nice. Uh, but it's like, there's helicopters flying, right? So it's like, all right, helicopter lands. Um, what can I do here to make this even more interesting? All right, write T.I.'s name really big. Uh, and do, doing things like that, there's like, animating Pink Panthers coming out of chalices and stuff because obviously Riff Raff isn't over the top enough. But you know, we gotta push everything <laughs> a little bit further. And it, it was the necessity because I literally could not go shoot more stuff, right? I missed the whole beginning part of that creative process where I didn't get to say, yo, here's a dope idea from the, from the jump. So now I'm starting to like make digital collages on top of music videos, right? Or other instances, like when I was shooting videos, uh, shot a video from my friend Gerald Walker, it's like one of my first videos ever. We had no budget, no locations, nothing, right? So now all of a sudden I gotta think about how do I make this interesting when I don't have any production value, right? So then you gotta flip it upside down, start thinking about what's a new way to ingest this media, right? So you gotta start flipping things around, moving them around and try to create uh, based off of necessity. So if you find yourself in creative ruts, start to give yourself boundaries and limitations, weird things, challenges, right? Because when you start to do that, all of a sudden, the, your path narrows and it lets you focus more, right? Bam. Uh, I don't know if I wanna do that slide. Do it anyway. Um, so where do you get these ideas, right? So again, everywhere and nowhere at the same time. There's nothing new under the sun. You know, you've heard it a million times before, but hear it again, there's nothing new under the sun, right? So as far as like trying to chase this new, creative, wholly original idea, don't even do, don't even try doing that because you're just going to bang your head against the wall when you find out that 18 other people did that idea last February and six of them did it better than you were planning on doing it, right? <laughs> it's just, you're just going to give yourself a headache, right? Because banging your head on the wall produces headaches. Uh, <laughs> think about it differently, right? Steal less from more people. Great artists steal, right? But you don't want to be a copycat, right? And that's what happens when you steal from one person, from two people, from three people. You just look like, oh, he's just copying this person, he's just copying that person, he's copying this person. You know what I'm saying? But when you start to copy from 17 people and create new combinations of ideas and thoughts, now all of a sudden you're getting into a new space. Because there, even with a finite number of stimuli, you can create an almost infinite number of combinations, right? Notice I said almost. Because I said, you start with a finite, right? You can't, you can't go from finite to infinite. But um, that joke didn't work. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, again, and we bring it back to Kanye West, right? So Kanye West has seven studio albums, right? If you go to whosampled.com, Kanye West has sampled over 370 different songs across those seven albums. So that's on average for every one song that he's producing, he's sampling four or five different people and then throwing his own sauce on top of it. And that's what allows him to sound different. 
right? That and Kid Cudi and all the other people who wrote for him. But um, it's this amalgamation that you gotta look for, right? All right. Bam, I'm doing good on time, okay. Uh, right, and then the I wish that I could do that question, right? I don't know, a lot of you guys are creative in here, so I don't know how many of you guys are saying that to yourselves versus how many of your friends are saying that to you, but even still, like, I look at Kanye West and I'd be like, I wish I could do that, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta remember that you just have to work for it, right? There's no shortcut around it. You just gotta work for it. When it comes to coming up with ideas, you gotta sit down, get in your creative space, whatever that space is for you, bang out idea after idea after idea after idea. If it's good, if it's bad, if it's ugly, if it's beautiful, that doesn't matter. Keep thinking. Because the more you keep your juices going, all of a sudden, the more places that you have to pull from to put together new original ideas, right? New original combinations, okay? I mean, there was a time when um, I was just, I'm still an aspiring director, I don't wanna get that confused, but um, there was a time where I just wanted to direct and I had never done so, right? And I flew to New York and I met up with these guys at Daily Motion and I pitched them this idea for a mad black man, right? Now, originally I was thinking I'd just make a little sketch or something like that, it's two minutes, but I was feeling myself and I told him, I wanna make a whole half an hour show. Didn't have a half an hour worth of content. <laughs> Messed around, they said, go, good, you got it, do it, here's some money. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I don't know what I'ma do. <laughs> And like I had like four months to make something, right? And so I had a little bit of money, not nearly enough to do what I was asking to do, right? Uh, I called up a mentor of mine, uh, Robert Townsend, and I told him how much money, he, I told him I got some money to make something, and he was like, oh, that's great. And I told him the number, and he was like, ouch, okay. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I needed all kinds of stuff, right? I needed, sets, I needed uh, clothes, I needed, uh, I mean wardrobe, I needed actors, I needed uh, grips and lighting and electric, but what I did was I didn't let any of that get in my way. I just believed like, yo, this is gonna happen. The fact that this ball is rolling is motivation enough, let's get it done. I walked, in, I, mean, I, I tell you this, this is a true story. I walked into every building downtown, every building that I could sneak into, every stairwell I could creep up and down, looking for empty offices and empty rooms till I, till I got to the city center building. They had the whole 10th floor was empty, right? So I was like, all right, cool, bet. This whole thing is empty. First of all, let me see, can I sneak in here without telling anybody? No, I can't, okay. <laughs> Wrote up a proposal, sent it to them. They were down. They weren't using the floor for anything. They were gonna remodel it uh, soon. So all of a sudden now, I'm a first time director and I got the whole 10th floor of a major building downtown for my production for free, you know? And then we do the same thing again. We start pitching for food and we start pitching for wardrobes and we keep collecting and the ball keeps moving, but it's because you believe that you can create this idea. Uh, my, uh, my mentor, Robert Townsend says, the creatives get pregnant with ideas, right? Ideas are like children. Right? So there's a gestation period where you need to just keep it to yourself and prepare it for the world, right? But at some point, you gotta pop that baby out, right? You can't just walk around pregnant for like five years. It's no good, right? But like once you get it out, of, once you get it out and once you get it out into the system, you can't just leave it, right? Because ideas are like children, right? You gotta, you gotta feed them. You gotta pay attention to them. You don't have to clothe them because this is not real, that's figurative. <laughs> but um, you gotta rear them, you gotta give them energy if you want them to survive because if you don't, they will wither and die. Some ideas come back and they get resurrected over and over again just like Jason movies, but not everything. <laughs> you gotta pay attention, you gotta give care to the ideas that you love and that you trust and that you believe in in order to see them to fruition. And that's how you bring these ideas from nothing, from this, the, these things that don't exist, and pull them down and birth them out and make them real. That's my time.
Bam! 